What is up guys, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Busters, the series in Space Engineers where we try things to find out what works and what doesn't. Uh, in this episode I want to go over three myths that I get pretty often in the comments section and those are, uh, do ships use fuel while landed, can you move an asteroid, I get that one a lot surprisingly, and can you reach the sun? Let's test them out. Okay, starting right off, do ships use fuel while landed? Now I got this one a lot in the Let's Play series where I had my ship that was landing geared to the ground like this and it also had the engines on like that. And people were saying that because of this like bright, bright uh, animation here that it's actually using fuel while landed. But is it? Let's test that out. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to, well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, remove all this stuff. This is to fuel it. Oops. Let's remove this. We're in creative mode. Oh god. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. That's all the fueling stuff, so we're just going to make sure it's not getting fueled again. Let's put our, uh, our, our those things back on because we probably need those. And uh, let me fly just to show you that it works. Okay, so uh, both of those are on in the hotbar. Let's unlock our thing and we'll take off a little bit and we'll, we'll, we'll fly forward. Now most of, the, uh, most of the flying here is the atmospheric thrusters, but the hydrogen thrusters are also doing their job uh, down there. Yeah, see? Okay, now we're going up though. And I don't have downward facing thrusters or upward facing thrusters. Okay, let's land this thing. So we're gonna land. First, we're gonna test this with the landing gears connected to see if it's using any power. And then we'll test this with the uh, dampeners turned off to see if it's using any power or fuel rather. Okay, lock that down. Let's uh, let's real quick turn back into, uh, into normal mode here. So we cover all of our bases. I'll just turn all those off. So now we are effectively in survival mode because this is a survival uh, world. Let's take inventory of how much fuel we have. Okay, so first we have 5.9% on this and we'll remember that number. And then we also have on this one, uh, 5.9 and I believe, is that the same number? I don't think it's the same number, but it's close, right? No, it might be the same number, 885905. And this one is 885905. Okay, they're both the same number. So if that changes at all, then we'll know that it's used some power. Let's go down here. Those are on clearly and we'll wait. All right, it's been about five minutes and the lights have been on this entire time uh, as you'll probably see in a little time lapse. Uh, so let's actually go and check these again and see if they have used any sort of fuel at all. Uh, let's press K here and 5.9885905 liters and let's check out this one as well because maybe this one has used fuel and the other one has not let's see 5.9885905 liters okay so i imagine if uh if it didn't oh, we're still in survival mode if it didn't cause any uh any fuel leakage in five minutes while connected to the ground it probably wouldn't in an hour or two hours or anything like that um uh Let's, let's try this without the landing gears. Let's take off the landing gears, turn our dampeners to off, and see if it uses any power while the dampeners are off. Okay. Um, we'll actually just cut the landing gears off. How about that? that? That's not a bad idea. Both of those are on. Let's turn off our dampeners so we're on the ground and not using any power. Uh, and then let's go and check these again because I'm sure they've moved because we actually did just move there. Uh, we have 5.8 now. 8, 7, 10, 58. 87, 10, 58. That's the number to remember. 5.8, 87, 10, 58. All right, easy. Okay, let's uh, stand here for another five minutes and see if that uses any power, any fuel. Yo, I just realized, is that my footstep? Do I make footsteps? Yo, that's cool. How long has that been in? Is that like a new thing that you can see your footsteps and stuff? Because that looks, that, that's really like detailed and stuff. That's kind of cool. I like it. Has that been in since like a long time or did they just add that? Okay, anyways, about five minutes have gone by. Let's uh, let's take a look at this, see if it's used any fuel while in uh, no dampener mode. Let's check it out. Let's press K. Uh, 5.8, 87, 10, 58, which I believe it was on that last time. The recording will tell. Uh, 5.88 8, 87 10 58 all right so what we've determined here is that it doesn't actually use any fuel while here so this uh this yellow light here is that's like fake it's not uh it's not actually using any fuel at all it's just to tell you that these are on um so yeah you guys can rest easily now uh knowing that you don't actually have to turn off your hydrogen engines when you land it's not using any fuel at all 
All right, next up, can you move an asteroid? Now, I did try this on a planet in one of the previous episodes of Space Busters. Uh, I attached a like a I attached a grid to the planet and tried to move it, but people want to know if you can move an asteroid. So, uh, let's try it out. Now, one of the complaints that I got last time was that the uh, the grid that I used to try to move the asteroid or the planet rather, it was a small planet last time. The grid that I used was a uh, was a was a, a static grid. It wasn't a ship grid, and we'll see that in this one right here. Let's hop in, and if I press K, you can go to info, and you can see that this is a static grid, and uh, it cannot be converted to a ship. See, convert to ship is not possible. It's hard to read there, but um, but yeah. So it's a static grid. Let's try it anyway. Let's give it a go. So in this one, if our meters per second goes any anywhere other than zero, then the asteroid would be moving since we're attached to it. Let's uh, let's just floor it. We're just flooring it with these ion thrusters. We're in space, so ion thrusters are the way to go here. Uh, but it doesn't look like our speed is going anywhere, so we're definitely not moving the asteroid. But, you know, a lot of you said that uh, last time I tried this, that it's probably because we're in a static grid, and static grids can't move by default. So uh, let's try something different. Let's, uh, well, let's, let's actually delete this so it's not a factor in the next thing. Um, so delete you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I've built this thing right here, which is pretty much what we were just sitting on, but like in moving form. So it's a ship that will kind of ram into that and try to push it. Um, it's got a lot of thrusters, a lot of batteries to keep those thrusters working, and it's got a big pusher. Block damage is off, so uh, so it won't it won't deform or anything. Um, and we're gonna try that out. Now we'll know if it moves because I have these asteroid side markers. So we'll we'll see that they're just a little bit off of, off of the surface there. And we'll go check out the other one as well, which is on the other side. And if these move at all, then we'll know that the asteroid has moved. That's how we'll know that asteroids are movable. <laughs> and you can fly asteroids out of the other people's bases. Oops. Yeah, this one is right here. So if those move, that's how we'll know. All right, let's give it a go. Oh, man, we have a lot of... <laughs> look at all those um, uh, gyros on there to allow us to turn at this speed. Okay, let's go forward. Oh gosh, we have no backward thrusters. Oh, hang on, we have no we have no side thrusters either. Okay, well it looks like this is going to be a one-way operation. Let's hit this thing and let's let's just pound it right here. Let's floor it. Now our meters per second is well, it's actually at zero now. I was gonna say it's gonna fluctuate a lot since we can technically move, but um, but it looks like it's staying at zero. We are flooring it at the max possible. It actually, looks like we don't have enough batteries. Let me real quick add a couple batteries so that uh, so that that's not a factor as well. Um, make sure we have enough. By the way, it's a uh, it I've I've uh, I've symmetried it so it placed a lot of batteries when I did that. <laughs> All right, let's hop in and floor it again. We're only using 14% of our power, and we're just absolutely hammering it as much as possible here with all these thrusters. And it doesn't look like we're moving anywhere. We see a little bit. Of, I can't really see that very well down there. You see a little bit of damage happening, but it's not actually damage, it's just like particle effects. But, uh, but yeah, let's give it a little bit. Let's let's just keep flooring it, see if anything happens. Uh, I think I think by now, if we were going to move the asteroid, we would have moved the asteroid. Let's uh, let's hop out of here and take a look at our markers. We'll see if they've moved. Asteroid side one, how you doing? Asteroid side one is still just a tiny bit off the surface, but let's confirm it with asteroid side two. To make sure that uh, that it's not a fluke. Oh, we're going too fast in that direction. Hello, asteroid side two. Have you moved any? Let's check it out. Okay, asteroid side two is also just barely off the surface, so it has not moved either. Guys, it's impossible to move an asteroid. I mean, you can you can uh, place asteroids if you want with the um, with the magic of uh, admin mode. But you cannot move an asteroid. It's a it's a voxel thing, and voxels in this game do not move. Um, they're they're static, which is why planets are also static. It's a very nice view there. <laughs> Everything is static except for your ships. Of course, that brings us to the last thing: Can you reach the sun? Now, I just said that everything is static, but the sun moves around, so that can't be static, right? We can actually set the time of day offset and see the sun moving. So it's got to be. A thing, right? We can actually go and touch it? Well, let's find out. Now, uh, throughout all my time in Space Engineers, I've not tried to reach the sun. I know for a fact that it's not like a, a, a touchable thing like that. However, I don't know if we can reach where the sun is. Um, 
so we're going to try it today. Uh, the sun rotation is set to one day, which means it, it rotates in the real time of 24 hours. Um, so we should have plenty of time to just kind of start flying there and see if we see if we reach it. Now we also have the max uh, speed mod on. So we're going to be able to go very, very quickly. And we'll see if the sun... Uh, if we get close to the sun. Now imagine if we're getting closer, it will actually get larger, right? I mean, th I'm just I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. It would get larger if we're getting closer, right? Uh, so if it stays the same size as we're blazing through space, then you could probably assume that we're not going to get much closer. But I don't know. I don't actually know if you can reach the sun. Like I said, it's not. It's definitely not like a planet because those are voxels and they don't move in the game. Um, but is it a thing that you can that you can get to? Let's find out. We're just going to keep going full speed here, and we'll probably time lapse this as well, so you don't have to sit through all of this. But um, but yeah, if you see the sun getting larger, then we're getting closer, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's a rip. We just slammed headfirst into an asteroid and lost all our speed. That is unfortunate. <laughs> let's let's keep going, I guess. And hopefully not do that. I mean, I guess what I could also do is I could go into spec mode and just go super fast. Because you can go really fast in spectator mode. Also, the alien planet's really far away. Good lord. Wait. Okay, so I spawned on the new planet, which is... Perch Ram or something. I, I really don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but, uh, like, how far is that from the Earth-like planet? Because it's in the star system now. Because that's what I spawned in, a star system. Oh, wait. What the heck? Hang on. Okay. No, for a second I thought I wasn't moving. Because I, <laughs> I saw spectating Andrew at the top in follow mode. And then I saw at the bottom 402 meters per second. <laughs> so I was like, hmm... Am I not moving at all? But but yeah, okay. Um, so we're going very very quickly. You can actually see how quickly you can see the um, the kilometers in the bottom uh, right kind of on that marker because I did make a planet um, uh, waypoint. So you can kind of see how fast we're going here, trying to reach the sun. But I I you know I don't know that we're getting closer. We are certainly getting farther away from where we were. Let's spawn ourselves here. Oh god, I'm actually still going in the backwards direction. Um, how far is everything? Oh yeah, it's all over there. You can kind of see the alien planet right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that uh, that we'll get closer to the sun here. But let's keep flying. Okay, we're still traveling as fast as we can. You can see the ticker ticking up over there on the right. Uh, 48, is that 48,000 kilometers? 49, 50,000 kilometers away from our starting position and the sun is actually not getting bigger it's not it's not getting larger or anything um, yeah here's one thing that we could do here let me let me place my person here so our person is here okay so what I could do is I could so the planets there I have that marker if I go into K and make another marker right here a GPS marker new from current position uh, we'll call it uh, position 2 because that would be technically position 1 um, I could actually make a vector of this from this to this and then extend that out that way uh, And then I could actually manually set my position in the files and we could see if we can set ourselves like maybe I don't know a billion kilometers away from our current our, our, our uh, current position and see if at that point the Sun is on the other side of us Because that would mean that we would have passed it. Let's try that Okay, I've gone and plugged it in into uh, the same spreadsheet I used for the solar system model thing that we did uh, a little while back. And uh, and that's our new coordinate. Now, I think the sun has moved just very slightly since then. Uh, so that's not quite in line, but it is kind of in line with the, uh, with the planet one we have here. So it is the same vector. Now, uh, basically the way you do this, by the way, if you, if you want to know, is you take the change in X, the change in Y, and the change in Z between the two coordinates that we have, which is our current position... And the uh, and the planet over there and then you uh, you multiply those by the distance you want to go and you divide it by the distance that between the two coordinates so change in X change in Y change in Z divided by the distance between these two position 2 and planet um, 
gives us, uh, and, th and then uh, multiply that by uh, how far you want to go, and that will give you the new coordinates of like where you need to go. <laughs> that's kind of confusing. But uh, anyway, so what we're going to do, that's our new coordinate right there, so we know it's in the right direction. We're going to go in, and uh, manually put those coordinates. By the way, it's in light seconds. It's not in kilometers anymore. It's in light seconds. So we're going to go and in, uh, in, in put those coordinates into the game manually to put our like player over there. And we'll see if that works. All right, we have done the teleportation, and we are now at the new marker, where it was. Uh, see, back there, that's our planet and our position number two, which we marked. And that is 3,335 3, light seconds away, which is, uh, well, a million, I think, no, a billion kilometers is how far we traveled. Uh, and, well, the sun is still on that side of us. So I would have thought that if we would have gone past the sun, we would be able to look back at where we were and actually see the sun kind of right there. But uh, we have not actually gone past the sun by going a billion kilometers. Um, let's go a little bit farther. Let's go 10... Let's go... Let's go a trillion. Let's go a trillion kilometers. Which is a thousand billion. <laughs> that's a lot of... That's a lot of kilometers. Alright, now we're one trillion and one billion uh, kilometers away. What was going on? What is going on with that? Wait, hang on. Let me zoom in. What is going on? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. We're just like glitching out. Are we? Does I think we're falling or something? No, I. What on earth? I mean, no, earth is over there. What in space is going on? <laughs> okay, we're going to have to live with that. Um, we are now uh, one trillion and one billion um uh, away and so uh so yeah that that number of light seconds away and the sun is still on that side of us i'm starting to think it's not possible but let's go even further we want a trillion what's higher than a trillion uh a million billion trillion quadrillion let's go one quadrillion away <laughs> jesus all right we've gone one quadrillion away so we're now one quadrillion one trillion and one billion away from the uh away from the planets um, that is now 105.7 light years away. That's how far we've traveled, and the sun is still on this side. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that even in real life, on a realistic scale, the sun is much closer than 100 light years. <laughs> the sun's much closer than one light year. The sun is like seven light seconds away, isn't it? In real life, something like that. But, uh, or maybe 14? Seven. No, it's gotta be seven. I think. I remember hearing that like a long, long time ago. But anyways, if we have not passed the sun yet, I don't think we're going to. That This is a different sun. This is like in a <laughs> different galaxy. Oh, man. Okay, you know what? Let's, let's, do, let's do one quintillion anyways, just for the lols. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now 105,700 light years away from there. That's a lot of light years. Uh, and the sun is still on this side of us. It has, we have not crossed the threshold of the sun to where it would be between us and the original points. It's still on the other side of us. Okay, I think we can determine at this point that it's it's not possible to uh, to reach the sun. It's not actually a thing that you can reach. I don't know how they do it. Um, it might just be based on where your player's location is, and the sun is just like going around your player. I, I really don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely not a physical object, and it's definitely not on like a track around the edge. I really don't know. Okay, if anyone would like to clarify how this, how, how you may think it might be done, or if you know how it's done, uh, let me know in the comments below. Now, uh, one interesting thing, I don't think I can place anything this far away. I, is this a glitch? This must be. I can, well, no, actually, it, it just placed something, but I don't know where it placed. This is weird. I think I can place things with... Oh, gosh, wait, what's happened to my spectator cam? Uh, hello? Spectate? I can't move my spectate. What did I do to it? I broke it somehow. <laughs> okay, I don't know what happened to my spectate cam, but I cannot place new objects uh, here. I don't know where they're getting placed. If I place it, I'll, let, me, let me go into spectator cam and see where this is getting placed. Um, oh my gosh, look at the distance from players. Distance from center is what we want to see. So distance from center, that's a planet. Well, anyways, my spectator cam is broken, so uh, let's have a little recap on what we learned today. So first things first, can or, or does your ship use fuel while you're landed in any sort of way, whether it be the landing gear or the um, or, or by turning off the dampeners? No, it does not. No fuel is used as long as your thrusters are not actively thrusting power. 
So even though you might see that little light at the bottom of those hydrogen thrusters, that does not mean it's using fuel, it's just a little animation that you can see to show that they're turned on. Number two, can you move an asteroid in any way? No, you cannot move an asteroid. You can teleport an asteroid by uh, using probably magic in the, in the files, but you cannot move an asteroid with a ship, and you cannot move an asteroid with thrusters or anything like that. They're voxels and they're stationary, so they're just like planets. You can't move them. Uh, finally, can you reach the sun? Uh, no. Um, at least in this method, by going toward it, you cannot reach the sun. We have, tr we have gone... How far? 105... 1700 light years and we still have not reached the sun so i think if we haven't reached it now we're not going to reach it i hope you may have learned something during this video if you have any other myths that you think i might uh, i might want to check out please post those down in the comments and i'll add them to the list of uh list of things to look at in space engineers uh, if you like this video please hit the like button put any comments down below in the comments section and i will see you guys in the next episode of space busters